All righty, folks, the man you have been waiting for, all the way from Algiers, New Orleans. Go, go, go. Everybody, please give it up for Chef Wayne. Aye, what up, folks? Man, I got to tell you, welcome out tonight to my cooking experience. Before we get started, I want to introduce DJ Katz from Moonlight uh, Karaoke and DJ Service. That's my man right here. And also, I'd like to mention my sponsors who make all this happen. You know, tonight we have Matt Willingham, Willingham Seafood in the house. There he is. Yeah, you're right. I got Powell and Swanick in the house. We got our VPS Airport people here. And J. Odom Group. So thank y'all for all being here. And also, I have a special guest. I've got Captain William Pugh from Rocked Up Charters here in the house tonight, too. And, you know, William and I have done a lot of fishing shows together. So I may be going to you here and there, you know, through the show. William, you know what's up. All right, folks. So here we go tonight, guys. This show is a crawfish-inspired menu. Everything crawfish. You know, it's crawfish season in Louisiana, so I thought this is what we should do tonight, okay? And I'm going to start it off with one of my most popular new appetizers we're doing here at the restaurant. It's called our Cajun Spring Roll, and it just so happens that it features crawfish in it. <laughs> All right? So what we do, you're going to be surprised how we put this together, and I'm going to show you a few little tips and techniques on how to do it, okay? So we're going to crank up the fire. We're going to get the fire a little hot. There we go. We're going to start off, guys, with a little garlic butter. And what I'm doing right now, guys, is we're going we're gonna, to um, show you how we saute all the ingredients to make the spring roll. Then I'm going to show you a little technique on wrapping one for you, okay? So we're going to get started off. I always like to start off with the vegetables. We got a little onion. And Matt Willingham, you know what onion is, right? We've been through this before. Yeah, that's, that's onion with a little Cajun rubbed all over it. All right, here we go. <laughs> we got a little bit of, of bell pepper. And we got a little celery. And um, if you don't know it, um, in Louisiana, where I come from, people are so religious about their food. The three main ingredients that go in to most things we do is called the Holy Trinity. And that's what I just put in here, bell pepper, celery, and onion. So we're going to get started with that. We're going to start sauteing that down a little bit. And as that sautés down a little bit, we're going to add a little bit of our andouille sausage. Oh, yeah. Some good andouille sausage. And so... First off, what you want to do is you want to sweat down these vegetables, and you want to get that andouille going, get a, little, get a little something going on there, get that going, okay? Now we're going to add up some diced, wonderful, fresh shrimp from Matt Willingham, Willingham Seafood. Here we go. The only place to get shrimp on the bayou. Yeah, you right. Oh, Matt, how you, how's it smelling over there, Matt? We doing all right over there, baby? All right. Just want to make sure, man, I'm here to entertain you. That's all, baby. All right, here we go. We're cooking that up, and as this is sautéing down, boy, you can smell all the different aromas coming out of there, folks. This is really a wonderful dish. Now, we're going to get this sautéing. Okay, next we're going to add a little bit of garlic powder. A little garlic powder. I didn't know y'all like garlic powder that much. That's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, and then I do a little sea salt and a little cracked pepper, a little pinch of that. Pinch will do you. Less is more. Like I always say, less is more. All right, then we're going to do a little bit of Cajun seasoning. You can use your Cajun seasoning of choice. I like Tony's, if you want to know, and that's what we're using. Um, also, I got a little bit of our Blackman seasoning, which we mix up here at the restaurant. Put a little bit of that in there also and uh, to give it a little spice. Now I'm going to saute that a little bit until my shrimp are cooked. Okay, now the shrimp are almost cooked here and everything's sauteing down. Okay, then I'm going to add my crawfish. And I always put the crawfish in last because the crawfish tails and meat are already cooked. So you're not going to have to saute it as much. If you saute or cook that too much, it'll disintegrate and break up, and you won't have anything to, um, to be left at the end. Okay? So now we're going to add that here. Okay? And as this boy, doesn't that smell good, guys? Y'all can smell that over there? Yeah, you right. Yeah, you right. See, now this is all coming together nicely. And this is basically the ingredients for our Cajun spring roll. And then now, once I've got this to where I want it, like so, a little flip, flip, a little flip, flip. All right, we're going to bring that down a little bit. Um, and then the last thing I add, once I turn down the fire, is I add some fresh boiled or steamed white rice, okay? Then I add some fresh shredded carrot. I like to put the carrot in last and not saute it because I like that little bit of crunch in my spring roll. Um, it makes a nice little uh, touch to it. Then we're going to mix this up. And what you do is you let all the rice absorb all that seasoning so the flavor goes throughout. Okay? And then if you can see, like I'm showing you, oh, baby, 
What you think about that? Yeah, you right. <laughs> all right, guys. So you see now that's all blended nicely together. And so basically, I'm going to go ahead and kill this fire right here, and that's how we make our spring roll. Now, I'm going to give you a tip when you're fooling with spring rolls, and um, I'm going to show you how to, how to do it pre pretty, uh, in a very cool way, a little different than what you were thinking. But the main thing is, is after this, this is done, you got to let it cool, and then you want to drain it. You can either use a cheesecloth or you can put in a strainer, but you have to get all the liquid out of it because if you don't, when you roll a spring roll, it's going to blow up on you. It's either going to bust or you're going to get a hole in it. It's not going to hold its, its true form, okay? So we have a little bit of our mixture that's already done and ready, and then I'm going to show you how we do it. And um, somebody taught me this technique about spring rolls, but this is basically your basic spring roll. And what I do is I put a little on the edges and on the end, okay? And then here's what we do. Instead of rolling up corners like you would think, the best way to roll up a spring roll is to go like this, okay? And then you want to flip this over like so. You see what I'm saying? Like so. And that way when you fry it, there is no opening side. And you roll it straight like so. And it's a little bit difficult to do it. But you roll it straight and you keep them in. And you keep them in. You roll it like so. Okay? And then you put a little bit of egg wash right here. And then you roll it over. And you see how nice and straight and even that is, guys? That looks great, right? And you see most people, most people would roll it like you do silverware. On an angle, flip the corners over and roll it. But if you do that, when you put it in the hot grease, it has a better chance of busting open from the sides. When you roll it like this, there's no opening on either side, and it stays nice, straight, and perfect. Fantastic. How you like that, guys? Well, that's going to be our first course. That's our first course, but for the sake of television, I'm going to move to our second course. That way my guests here who are with me tonight can, can have their first and second course. So now to move over to this side really quickly, and we're going to fry these up in the back. And this is actually what the finished product looks like. Doesn't that look great, guys? Perfect. Every one of y'all is going to get some of these, I promise. All right, great. So now we're moving over to one, something I really like, of course. Moving along with our crawfish-inspired menu, right? We've got our fried crawfish tails right here on our salad. Louisiana crawfish tails. But how do we bring this back home? How do I bring this back to the West Bank of New Orleans? I'm going to make my mama's homemade ramelade sauce. And if you've never heard of ramelade or ever made it from scratch, um, you can see by all these ingredients, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And, um, but that's what makes it special. It's really like Cajun tartar sauce, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so first thing we start off with is we're going to start off with a little bit of mayo. Okay, we're going to make a little mayo here. Perfect. Then we're going to do Creole mustard. So that's the two main ingredients is that spicy Creole mustard with the mayo gives it that tang that I like so much. All right. Then I add a little bit of sweet chili sauce. You know, you can put uh, chili sauce, you know, uh, ketchup if you like, if you don't want it too hot. But I like the little tang from the sweet chili sauce. Then I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Some of my hot sauce, dark side hot sauce right here. Okay. Then we're going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Okay. And then, um, believe it or not, I like to put capers in mine. You know, some people don't. Some recipes call for it. Some of them don't. Whatever floats your boat. Of course, with any of these ingredients, if something you don't like, you can just leave it out and it'll be fine. Okay. Then I'm going to do a little chopped parsley, a little salt and pepper. Got to have salt and pepper in everything you cook, right? It just don't taste right, right? Just got to watch how much you put in. Then I got some diced garlic right here. I like that diced chunky garlic in this. And then I got some chopped up green olive. Hey, people say green olive. Where that came from, Chef Ernie? Well, you know, that's what I like. I like that little flavor in there. And then uh, we're going to do a little chopped celery right here. And I like a lot of celery. I'm going to put all of this in there. I like, I like the crunchiness of the celery in there. It just does it for me. And then we're going to do a little bit of our same mix, a little Creole seasoning, a little, a little paprika this time. And the paprika is a sweet paprika. And, you know, what it does, it gives it a nice color, that nice red color. Because, you know, it's not always about the way it tastes, but sometimes it's how it looks nice too, right? Okay, great. Now, we got all our ingredients in there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of citrus. Got to add a little citrus in there. A little bit of lemon, a little bit of citrus just sets it off like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and whip this up real quickly for you. Oh, baby, look at that right there. Man, that's beautiful. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more of my paprika because I like that pinker color to my, to my ramelade. And we serve this here at the restaurant every day. It's one of our most popular sauces with anything that we do. 
A little bit more paprika there. And you see how that paprika gets at that color and consistency I'm looking for right there? That nice, you want it to be a nice pink color, right? And all these other flavors in there are just going to explode in your mouth when you try it. You're going to love it. There we go. There we go, Matt Willingham. I got it now, nah, baby. We cooking now, nah, baby. Ah, you know I like to do that. I really do. I really love to do that. All right, guys, now we're going to finish it off. We're going to finish it off with a little dressing on the top. Oh, man. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. You know, I like a little bit like that, folks. And, guys, this is our crawfish salad with ramelade right here. Ah, Doesn't that look great? Well, guys, I want y'all to sit back, relax. Folks at home, we're going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a break so I can feed my guests here. And you know what? If you want to be one of my guests at this show, go to mydocsitecafe.com for your tickets, baby. Aye, I'll see you in a minute. Hey, you right. The Destin Fort Walton Beach Airport and Allegiant Air have added many new cities you can fly to nonstop. Visit Memphis for music and great barbecue, Fort Lauderdale for cruise ships and nightlife, or enjoy the Smoky Mountains from Knoxville. And when in Oklahoma City, make sure you visit the National Cowboy and Western Museum. Wherever your dreams take you, they start at the Destin Fort Walton Beach Airport. Visit flyvps.com to see all the new nonstop cities. Put a smile on your face, fly VPS. Hello, I'm Matt Willingham with Willingham Seafood. If you're ready for a fresh local taste of seafood, come visit our retail market on the beautiful Boggy Bayou in Valparaiso, Florida. Willingham Seafood deals with an assortment of fresh gulf fish and local bay shrimp. We're also in the wholesale business where we provide local seafood to our local restaurants. We're able to provide affordable costs because we have our own fleet of boats. Check us out for retail or wholesale at willinghamseafood.com. Remember, from our nets to your table, it's Willingham Seafood. What's happening? Guys, welcome back to my cooking experience. I hope you're having as much fun at home as we're having here. Um, and now we move into my main course, the whole main course of the evening. And I call it Redfish Algiers. And, you know, I'm from Algiers, which is the West Bank side of the Mississippi River from the city of New Orleans. And, you know, what I love about this dish when I created it is I took the three best things I love most about growing up. First of all is my mother's recipe for andouille sausage jambalaya right here. Next up is crawfish, because you know, when I was a kid, man, we had a lot of canals and trinaches behind my house. So when me and my cousin were like 10 years old, we had our own pirogues, and we used to catch our own crawfish and sell them to people and borrow them. And then redfish, man, because redfish is indigenous to the state of Louisiana, and uh, I grew up catching redfish. So I put the three things I love most about my youth in one dish, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to bring it to you right now. <laughs> Y'all better pay attention right here. You got to pay close attention. Okay, guys, now here we go. And you know what's funny with cooking is sometimes it's not always the recipe, but sometimes it's the process of how you do things that make it good, you know? I mean, because you can give some people the same recipe, and they come up with different things or the same ingredients. So it's the process. So I'm going to show you the process of how I do this. And the way I started off, guys, is we're going to do a little redfish. I'm going to kick that on. And if you notice... I've got a, um, a cast iron skillet right here, and that was, I learned this from my mother and my grandmother. When we want to blacken in things, anything we're blackening, we're going to use a cast iron skillet. So when you come to my restaurant, we've got big old cast iron skillets. In fact, Willingham, I got one so big, I might be able to cook you in that son of a gun. You know what I'm saying? But, but, you know, we use cast iron skillets in the restaurant because that's how you get the real authentic blackening. And um, that's what's so important. You know, just the other day, I had a guy here from out of town, and he stopped me and said, man, that's the best blackened fish I ever ate. And I said, yeah, I know that. Dude, you kidding me? You ain't telling me something I don't know. All right, guys, so we're going to get this hot. And, you know, what I'm doing for y'all right now is actually, because I didn't know how many people like the spice tonight or not, so we're doing what we call bronze redfish tonight for y'all to, to enjoy. Um, or we can call it skinny blacking, however you want to call it. <laughs> and um, what we did was we took a wonderful piece of redfish from Matt Willingham, Willingham Seafood over there. 
And um, so we got some fresh redfish right here. And when we do it bronze or we do it skinny, we don't coat it. Like normally we would coat this both sides for blackening, but we kind of just dust it a little bit. So it's got that flavor, but it's a little healthier, okay? So we're going to drop this in here and get this cooking for you, okay? And now while this is heating up and while this is cooking, we're going to put together my redfish algae sauce, okay? And basically it's a crawfish cream sauce. And uh, once again, you know, sometimes simple is better. We're going to go ahead and kick on this burner right here. Oh, yeah, we cooking now. All right. Aye. Oh, man, they got it. They got it. I love it. Man, y'all make me feel right at home up in here. All right, here we go. So we're going to start off with a little garlic butter. And um, we pre-blend this here at the restaurant. We use it on oysters and all kinds of things. Uh, but basically, it's just a blended garlic butter, okay? All right, we're going to get that going a little bit right here. All right, get enough of it in there for us. Aye, there we go. Aye. Hey, on cue. All right, and then, believe it or not, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little heavy cream, okay? And it's 50-50. On this dish, it's 50-50 heavy cream and garlic butter, okay? And so basically, we're just going to whisk this together, and we're going to just start cooking it down, Okay. And we're just going to start cooking it down. In fact, we're going to cut it back a little bit. All right? And um, just like so. Fantastic. See, these things get really hot really quick. Now I'm going to come over here. Boy, look, it's looking good over here. I'm going to flip that fish for you. Oh, yeah, baby. We in business there. Okay, guys, now what we're going to do is once the sauce starts to blend together or come together, okay, we're going to add our crawfish. Okay? Some fresh Louisiana crawfish tails in the house, blend these together, let these get hot together, let these get going together, which will bring the flavor of the crawfish into the dish, okay, all right, all right, now we're going to add, we're going to add a little bit of liquid crab ball, okay, and that's how I get that crawfish crab ball feeling and taste to this dish, but you got to be careful because the liquid crab ball is very concentrated, just a little dash will do you. If you like it hotter, you put a little more on that. That's all. <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna do. Now we're gonna do some of my Tony seasoning right here. A little Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning of choice. All right. Then we're gonna add some of our blackened seasoning, which we had on our um, fish that we started with. Okay, which kind of brings it together. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can use at home. Um, now I'm gonna blend this together. See how it's getting that nice Algiers color, that pink color I like. And now we cooking, we cooking the Kisco. We got it rolling, okay? And so basically, there are three different ways you can reduce sauces, okay? And you'll learn this in culinary school, is that first of all, you can just reduce the sauce. Cook it down, cook it down, and reduce it itself. Second of all is a roux. Everybody knows what a roux is. A roux is used in dark sauces like gumbo, etouffee, um, creole, okay? And then, and then the other way is a way that a lot of y'all may not have heard of. It's called a slurry, okay? And a slurry is basically, and I'm going to show you what it is. Slurry is basically cornstarch and water, okay? And you see how it gets nice and thick like this? But you got to be careful because if you use too much of it, it can turn the paste really quickly. But a little bit will do you, okay? And I like it because a lot of times when you're working with a cream sauce, you know how it starts to separate at some point. You get to that point where if you're overheated or you're trying to serve it and it, the, the butter separate, the oil separating from the, from the cream and the butter. Well, with a slurry, you can bring it right back. And then when you get it slurried, it'll stay there for the whole deal. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of slurry. See, I'm teaching y'all something, you know what I'm saying? There you go. A little slurry right there. Guys, now we're going to mix that up. And you see how instantly it just gets creamy and it just brought it all back together? Because I was right at that point of this sauce starting to separate. And if any of y'all have ever cooked at home, there's nothing worse than you got your dinner all prepared, you're ready to go, and the sauce is separated. Oh, my God, what do I do? Well, you listen to Chef Ernie, you make it a little slurry. You're going to be all right. All right? And now we're going to blend this together. You see how nice and pretty that is, guys? You know, it's got all the flavors of the crab ball in it. It's got the Louisiana crawfish. And now what we're going to do is, guys, now that my fish is prepared, right, we're going to plate this up for y'all. We got our nice piece of skinny black and red fish on the top like so. Doesn't that look great? Yeah. Guys, and then we're going to come right over here, okay? And now I'm going to hit it with the algae sauce, baby. Ooh-wee! Hey, la ba Hey, la ba 
Ella bar. Oh, baby. Aye. You getting it now. Hey, can anybody tell me what Ella bar means? In Cajun, it means hey over there. Ella bar. <laughs> there you go. There we go, guys. Now, look how great that looks. Huh? Come on, guys. Is that just beautiful or not? Man, look, I know you people at home got to be getting hungry. You got to be getting hungry. You know what I'm saying? So you guys, y'all ready to eat this right now or what? Heck yeah. Well, guys, you guys at home, stay tuned because we're going to be right back. And I'm going to serve this wonderful dish to my lovely guest. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys? Aye. Yeah, you're right. Hi, I'm Whitney Cooley with the Powerhouse Real Estate Group. We have an amazing team of Keller Williams Realtors ready to assist you with all of your real estate needs, whether you're buying or selling. Now, I'm gonna take you on a virtual tour of two of our hot powerhouse listings. First, on the beautiful Destin Harbor, a private penthouse suite with a deep water boat slip, over 2,900 square feet, four bedrooms, three baths, private entry with security enhanced elevator, Words do not describe this two-story, two-balcony, amazing property. Now moving to the North Bay in the beautiful Swift Creek subdivision, a one-of-a-kind exquisite home features a cul-de-sac lot surrounded by Swift Creek's natural preserve. Over 4,900 square feet, five bedrooms, five baths. This home has so many enhancing features and custom touches. So remember, whether you're buying or selling, the Powerhouse Real Estate Group will get it done. So email me, Whitney Cooley at kw.com, or call or text 850-368-5782. I look forward to working with you. Oh, there they are. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I sure hope you guys at home are still with us, man, because we're having a great time tonight at my cooking experience. And let me tell you something. You know, I saved a really cool thing for last, which is something that I invented here at the restaurant. Or should I say, you know, it's funny. Sometimes in cooking in life, great things happen by accident. And let me tell you, I've got to set this up with a little bit of a story to tell you the truth about how this thing came about. Because what I'm doing for y'all tonight is called deep fried bread pudding. Right? <laughs> And look, crazy thing is, right, is everybody, I mean, there's 100 million different recipes for bread pudding, but I bet you ain't never heard of one fried before, right? Am I right? Am I right? Well, let me tell you how it came about. It's kind of a funny story. My son-in-law, Michael, who, who's, who's in the restaurant here tonight, uh, one day he was at the, we were in the kitchen. I had just finished a big patch of, uh, batch of bread pudding. I finished a beautiful batch of bread pudding, and I would set it on the counter, and it was cooling off. And he, he got this bright idea. He had watched the Food Network, right? You ever seen that show where they frying Snickers balls, they frying Twinkies, they frying all that crazy stuff? He's making one heck of a mess. And so he looks at me, and he, I say, he, said, he said, wow, I wonder what it would be like if I fried a piece of this. And I said, oh, boy, you're going to ruin that. Boy, he throws it in the fry, and I'm not paying no attention. And uh, so a few minutes go by, they pull it out, they put a little sauce on it, and they all just eating it going, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. So I go up to it, and I try to say, boy, you wanted something nice. <laughs> and that's how it happened, by accident. And it's like my signature dis dish right now. So I had to tell you all that story. Okay, so basically, bread pudding is a very simple dish. We have some milk. We have some granulated white sugar. We have a little bit of cinnamon, and we have some egg. And I'm going to tell you, this is, this is really how I developed the dish because most bread puddings don't have egg in it, but I have to add a little bit of egg to hold it together so when it cools, when we fry it, it doesn't break apart, okay? So that's the little trick that I added to it, okay? You know, sometimes the professionals got to take over every now and then, right? Hey, you know what? I oh, I love that. I love that. Thanks for giving it to me, guys. I love it. All right, so here we go. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to pour some milk in here. We're going whisk, to whisk this up for you. Then we're going to crack a couple of eggs in here. Okay, a couple of eggs in there. All right. Fantastic. A little cinnamon. Okay. And then a little bit of vanilla, okay? Oh, yeah, you got to have the vanilla. Got to have that vanilla. All right, guys, now I'm whisking this up. And the whole idea with this is, is when you do this, you want it to be nice and wet. It can't be dry, so when you bake it, there's dry pockets. So you, you want to just make sure you do it like this, get it all whisked up. Smells nice and cinnamony. Hey, hey. 
Come on now. Come on, you must be saying to yourself, how is it that easy? How does he make this look that easy? Because it really is. It really is. I'm serious. Okay, now what I'm doing right now, that's why I got my gloves on, is we're going to just let this soak in. And, you know, the other secret to this dish, guys, is using New Orleans French bread. Using the bread that stale New Orleans French bread or, or toasted New Orleans French bread that brings it together because it's going to soak it up. And that New Orleans French bread is just so special. Okay, now we're going to pour this in here. All right, guys, now we're just going to let this absorb and absorb the mixture, you know, and we're just going to let it absorb. And then once this, once this gets all mixed, I like to let it sit. Before I put it in the oven, I'll let this sit for about 15, 20 minutes to allow for the, for the bread that's there to absorb everything all the way through it. If you try to put it in the oven too quickly, you know, it, it, you may get some little dry spots. So we're going to let this, we're going to let this just sit here and moisten like it is, okay? And so that's basically what it's going to look like before it goes in the oven. You know, simple, but you know what? Sometimes the simplest things taste the best. You know what I mean? All right, guys, and now we're going to move right along for the sake of television. And oh, wait, hey, 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 right here, guys, this is a little bit of spice rum. Uh, this, is, this is a Louisiana spice rum. And um, when I do my cream caramel sauce, I like to add some of that to that. Gives it a little kick, you know, kick it up a notch. You know what I'm saying? All right, and guys, this is what the dessert comes out like. Check it out, right? This is deep fried Chef Ernie's deep fried bread pudding. And you see how it's nice and crusty and, and crispy on the outside, soft in the middle. Can't get no better than that, baby. Ah, Come on, now. And here we go, guys. I'm going to squirt some of this beautiful caramel sauce on top. There we go. That's what it's going to look like in a second. How you like that, folks, huh? Man, look. I tell you what, I'm making everybody hungry here. I'm hoping you're hungry at home. I tell you what, we're going to take a break for a second. I'm going to serve this beautiful dessert to my guests, and I'll be right back, baby. Ah, woo! Yeah, you're right. Viable Productions operates along the Florida Panhandle, offering professional media services to businesses and personal clients. We specialize in covering live events and performances in large and small venues. Visit QuietWoodProductions.com for more information and follow us on Facebook. Call 850-324-8745 for an affordable quote. Folks, if you're looking for a place to keep your boat docked, we're the location. We got beautiful brand new renovated docks. We got the most beautiful sunset views in the world. And you got my restaurant right here waiting for you when you come back, baby. So come on out, bring your boat. Give us a call, go to mydocsidecafe.com for information, or just give us a call, baby, 850-678-1241. I'll see you there. Oh, what's up, folks? All right. Hey, come here, Mr. Dave Swanick, guys. This is Dave Swanick right here, a good friend of mine. And you know what, Dave? Where I come from in New Orleans. When you hear this kind of music and you've had such a great time, right? Have we had a good time, folks? Absolutely. So we're going to end this with a second line, baby. Let's do it. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Aye. Come on now. Hey, you know what, guys? If you want a second line with Chef Ernie at my next cooking experience, go to mydocsidecafe.com for tickets. I'll see you there, baby.